Okay, so so from the from the moment a person tries to purify themselves, so to speak, or from a moment a person does something positive, let's say proactive, I'm reading purify themselves as again not literally. Um, but proactive, right? Making the world a better place, making yourself a better person. Something proactive. You're doing something positive in the world. Proaction. I think that the Zohar is saying here, that's the Yetzir HaTov, and it only comes to a person uh, when it only acts in the world when the person acts in the world, let's say like that. When you do something proactive in the world, when you act in the world, so then uh, either, again, with you, doesn't it not, not necessarily... Uh, going out and doing something, but again, going in and doing something. When you do something proactive, uh, you decide to do something proactive, something positive in the world, that's when the, that's the Yetzer Hatov, that's the, the good inclination, so to speak. Uh, and the Zohar goes on, what, From what time does, is a person, I would say, I would, I would, I would translate it like this, from, from what time does a person have the ability to pos- to really engage the world in a proactive way. And again, this is in general. Uh, so the Zohar says that 13 years. So meaning from the bat of Bar Mitzvah, from 12 or 13 years, 13 years for a man, 12 years for, for a woman. Uh, from that point on, the person then has the ability to uh, to do something positive, to, to, to engage their proactive abilities, and not just to act from uh, their uh, kind of, uh, not, not just to act from their natural self, from their natural tendencies, but to do something proactive in the world. So it's very, it's very interesting. Basically, it seems to me, the Zohar is saying here that the first 12 or 13 years of a person's life, those are the, that's the basic kind of tendencies and personality of the person. Of, of the human being. I mean, that's a development cycle. The major development happens in terms of uh, natural tendencies and personality. That develops in the first 12 or 13 years of, of a person's life, that period of time, right? And so in that, in that, in that time period, it's all, the person is simply taking everything in. Every, uh, the, person, the person is taking everything in, right? They're just, they're, they're absorbing everything. Right, and then from 12 or 13 on, then they have the ability to make conscious des- decisions in the world uh, for the positive. So it says something very interesting here, right? Kedain is David Barnash betravayhu, chad mimina, chad mimina, chad mismola. This the person has the ability to unite the Yetzer Tov and the Yetzer Hara. One is on the right, one is on the left. Yetzer tov limina, v'yetzer ra lismola. V'ilein inun train malachin mamash. Memanin v'inun mishtakhin tadir b'hadeh barnash. The Zohar says, you should know, there's a lot here, there's a lot here to kind of unpack. I don't want to just uh, translate it literally, but uh, these are real angels, says the Zohar. Um, one is on the right, one is on the left. So, basically, when a person engages the yetzer, Hato, meaning when you make a positive choice to do something in the world, proactive choice, so then you you unite the Yetzer Tov and the Yetzer Hara, meaning the flow, the natural flow of your life, the, the natural you, right, flows into your proactive self, the, the self that's actually doing something in the world. And so the two are united. They work together. Right? So your natural self becomes subjugated, so to speak, to your proactive self. So the meaning the Yetzer HaTov rules and subjugates and takes all that natural, all those natural tendencies and uses them for something positive and good. Uh, so that means that they, it unites them. Uh, Zohar also tells us enough, another bit of knowledge here that's very important. Uh, when you're a proactive person, you have a tendency to be more compassionate. And when you're more of a reactive person, when you're a person who uh, just is going with their kind of natural being and is not doing anything proactive in the world, not any, no consciousness, no conscious choice, 
so uh, you tend to be a, a kind of judgmental person. So it's very so this is a very interesting. So the Yetzer Tov pro action, doing something positive in the world, is on the side of compassion uh, and and understand and and and. and the ability to have rachmanut to and the ability to give, and whereas being reactive, right, has uh, is on the side of, so to speak, being very judgmental, uh, and almost in, to a sense, in a sense, cruel. Um, the the interesting thing here, uh, you you might think, well, it seems like the opposite of being. If you're being passive, you can tend to have more uh, compassion, really. But it's not it's not the case because if you if you really think about it. Um, in order to have compassion uh, on with someone, with another person, or any being, uh, you have to be quite aware. You have to be really open and and present, right? It's very easy just to react and just to say, "Oh, this person did this. They're a blah blah blah. You know, they're a whatever. You know, oh, this person did this. What a you know? Uh, this you're reacting. There's no proaction there." When you're getting angry, when you're judging people negatively, in order to when you're doing something positive, when you're in the mode of of uh, of proaction, it's very your mind is moving, your heart is moving, everything's moving, everything's doing, and so you see things much clearer. And when you see things clearer, uh, it's very hard not to have compassion, right? When you really find the person behaved poorly, but did did you know? Did you see how you know what happened to them this morning and? And you know what's going on in their lives, and you have it's very, and then it's it's almost how can you not have compassion? How how could you be angry at the person when you know what they're going through in their lives and what led up to them behaving in such a way? Uh, again, so proaction is on the side of the right, it has to do with compassion and kindness, right? Because you're when you're proactive, when you're actually doing as conscious and as opposed to reactive then it's almost impossible not to have Rahmanas. And it's almost always appropriate, you see, to have Rahmanas. Very very seldom is it not, although sometimes obviously it could be. Um, um, as the mission says, if you you know if you have compassion uh, compassion on a cruel person, then you're being cruel to a compassionate person. So again, it's not not always, but almost most of the time. That's an extreme circumstance. Um, most of the time, a, pers- a person can have uh, really. We'll see that if you're being proactive, if you're thinking, it's very hard to uh, not even just thinking. If you're if you're doing something positive in the world consciously, that you make a choice to do, uh, then it's very hard uh, to really not have compassion. As the opposite is also true. If you're being reactive, if you're just closed off in your shell and going along your merry way then it's very hard to have compassion. It's almost impossible, right? Because all you see is different things trying to get at you, right? Um, and so then you just you lash out back. You say, well, those, this person's coming at me this way, this way, so you're lashing out backwards, right? Um, so again, so we're talking about, again, consciousness versus, like, nature, kind of how you naturally go, right? So the Zohar is really... Uh, rightfully so, very much in favor of consciousness, of being conscious of what you're doing, being aware, awareness, doing something positive. Um, and when you do something positive, that, again, not just because you've been trained to do positive things, but you make a choice, I'm going to do this, I, this, I want to do this, I'm going to do something good in the world, I'm going to do whatever it is, or I'm going to do something good with me, you know? Um, you're taking all of that kind of nature, or the, the nurture part of you, the part of you uh, that's been trained to be a certain way, either from your own midos, from your own way of being, or how you were raised, or your circumstances, or whatever it is, you're taking all of that energy, and you're, and all of a sudden, it's all flowing into your positive choices. And so then the two are one. Uh, the Zohar also, so that's, a, I think, in a really a beautiful concept, uh, and a really, there's a really great way to be. Um, the Zohar, then uh, again, we're trying to kind of unpack this very th- this very thick uh, paragraph here, and there's much more to it than than I know, but um, it is very interesting. The Elan Inum train Malachim Mamish says says the Gemara. These are two angels, really. Go ahead and a little more coffee for that one. 
Now, this is a very interesting concept. Um, if I'm understanding the czar right here, which I'm, I think I am, means that human 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 consciousness uh, encompasses at least two angels. Every human consciousness encompasses an aspect of the spiritual world and has the ability, meaning our consciousness, we see it, again, we see our consciousness as, as sometimes, unfortunately, just physical. We're living in, but the Zohar doesn't see it that way. The Zohar is saying here, you know, your life, your consciousness is spiritual and um, it is comprised, so to speak, your whole life is comprised of these two, kind of, at least, these two real angelic forces, these two totally spiritual forces that you have the ability to control or not. Uh, and uh, Which is, again, a fascinating concept as to maybe uh, the development of the, the development uh, of human consciousness. Right? So, again, if we, if we look at ourselves not simply as physical beings, but as actually, we're actually spiritual beings, then perhaps we're developing into, you know, the physical realm is the first place where we have the ability to either be controlled by or control spiritual forces, spiritual activities, spiritual things, spiritual beings, angels. And so, maybe what Zohar is saying here is, you know, Malachim Mamesh, really we're talking angels here, your consciousness directs spiritual activity. And you can either be directed by that spiritual activity, uh, which tends to be quite negative. Right? Again, it's, 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 it's a sin right, to be directed by. Uh, or it can, you can direct, you can, you can take both those angels, both the, that, those spiritual entities, those, that spiritual energy, both of them, and direct them in the, into the area that you want. And so maybe life is, again, maybe hum, the development of human consciousness is one towards learning to control and direct spiritual energies. And, we, and simply time and space is the way, is the means by which we see those things really. Because maybe we're, we're just kind of at the beginning of consciousness. And so we need a very basic kind of um, realm in, in which to see how we control spiritual energy. But the, at the basis of it, the human consciousness is at least able to control two angels. Um, the Zohar goes on, actually, to say that um, it, could, it could be much more, depending on the person. And this is Yaakov Avinu, was like whole, you know, millions of angels were, so to speak, in his consciousness. That, uh, and, and, and interestingly enough, the, the relationship of the twelve tribes has to do with, with the angelic world, or with the spiritual world. It's not just... The Chinam, so to speak, that there were 12 tribes. It's very important that there were 12 tribes. It's a very important concept. These 12 groups that work in concert around something in the center, it's a very, very important concept uh, in terms of consciousness. Um, uh, yeah, so... Adi b'nei nash le'it the ka. So let's, he says, always, let's explore uh, what happens when a person does something proactive? Again, that's, what I'm re that's how I'm reading to make oneself to purify. Uh, proaction again, doing something positive in the world. Whenever you engage in something positive, and this is why I'm learning it this way, then you are in fact purifying. You are, you are making the world a better place. Again, whether it's internal, you decide. You know, I really, I want to, I want to develop my connection with God's more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to Him every day. I'm going to follow the, the monthly, right? I'm, I'm going to do that. It's not because you have to. It's just, I'm doing this. Wow. So that you've just, even just, just a little bit, you've just done something proactive. You've made your internal a little bit better, a little purer, a little bit closer, because you did something proactive. Let's say you decide, I'm going to, I'm going to write a beautiful piece of music, right? I mean, that's maybe not, that's maybe even harder than, uh, than uh, saying to him, but uh, maybe not. But uh, again, you're doing something pro. Even again, when you're playing that beautiful piece of music, so in that moment, you've made the world a little bit of a better place. You've purified it a little bit, made it hopefully a little bit nicer. Um, 
uh, or if you know uh, you decide I'm going to go, you know, anytime I I'm going to go and I'm I'm going to go visit people who are not feeling well, and I'm going to do it in such a way that's appropriate to who they are and where they are. And I'm not just going to run in. And <laughs> I'm going to really try to do a great job visiting visiting sick people, helping them, being an advocate for them. Wow, I mean, that's even, that's highest, that's the highest. You, you're making the world, you're purifying the world. And that's the other thing, is when you, when you do something for someone else, it both purifies, it first, it kind of makes the world a better place, literally, but then it also makes you a better person. And the idea also is when you do something proactive internally, when you do something spiritually proactive, uh, then it makes you a better person, which then should then cause you to behave better in the world and help more people. So the two, the two, kind of always go together, if it's real. You know, if you're really helping people in the world um, and in a proactive way, then it's purifying yourself. And if you're really being a spiritual person and trying to better yourself, then it really has a positive effect on people in the world. You're really uh, doing something. You really end up helping a lot, a lot more people, actually, in the world. And the two go together. But anyway, Zohar comes, let's, so let's explore what happens here, okay? When a person does something, and that, that's, again, that's why I'm explaining... Pro, uh, purification or coming to purify oneself uh, as pro-action. Um, so let's so let's expo explore here a little bit what happens when a person is proactive in the world and not just reactive. And again, we, uh, we were talking about earlier the uh, concept of Egypt when it says that they they killed the the firstborn male of the Jews. What it means, so to speak, spiritually. Um, I think I saw it in Rabbi Nachman's writings once. So what it what it amid with Rabbi Nelson, what it means is um, the pro. They in Egypt they wanted every every everyone should be reactive, no proaction allowed, only reaction, right? And so so that's the tip. That's prototypical galut, is is re, a reactive state of consciousness, not proaction, not doing. Right? So when a person comes to do something productive, they want to, they're, they're really, really making a conscious choice to do something good in the world. The Yetzir Hara is subdued in front of him, meaning, it, but again, not destroyed, but subdued or kind of that energy of, of, of the person's, again, reactive life, their natural way of being gets pushed into and controlled, like right? the flow of the natural life gets gets redirected into the positive uh, actions that the person's doing. The Shali Dimina al Smola, and then the right rules over the left, meaning compassion and, and giving rules over reaction and, and judging. And so the reactive nature of the person and the judgmental nature of the person is then used to implement as a, as a tool of implementation for the person's positive vision. Right, so that's the kind of again. This also has to do with the concept of matigo uh, uh sweetening of judgments. Right, I mean the sweetening of judgments. I mean maybe it's talking about what's coming down from heaven, but it's really talking about yourself also. Right, when your when your ability to judge is used not against others or even against yourself, even more importantly, uh, but used to make judgments as to how to implement something positive. So then you've just sweetened something which in in its nature can be quite bitter. Uh, so when you do this, when you so the 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 travayu mis uh, uh the two of them become the two of them become uh, one. The natra leilivne nasha, and this this uh, unification of the left and the right of the yetsir tov and the yetsir hara, uh, that is what protects a person through life. Right, there's a famous story, I think it was Rabbi Ari Levine, uh, was during, I think, the War of Independence in Eretz Israel, and uh, he was walking along, and everyone was running the bomb shelters, and then, and there were bom literally bombs falling and bullets flying, and he was just kind of walking like, right through all of this, and uh, someone ran up to him frantically and said, you know, Rabbi, you know, you got quick, into the bomb shelter, you know, and he said, no, he said, I'm... I understand you, everyone should go. He said, but I'm, I'm doing a mitzvah. I'm on my way to do a mitzvah. I'm, I'm, he's going to help someone. Or, yeah, I forgot what exactly what he was going to do. He was going to visit sick people or something. He was doing something really, some big mitzvah. 
And he said, I, if you're if you're doing a mitzvah, you're protected. And so I always kind of I always kind of thought that well, that's, that seems I don't know you know. But I think that's basically what it's, that's a, a, an example of meaning not just when you're doing a mitzvah. It's not just like yeah I put on film yesterday I'm putting it on today whatever. You know, uh, zunt. It's not just that. It's not just when you're doing a mitzvah. Meaning, I think what he was saying is when you're doing something proactive in the world, then you are protected. Because the entire basis of reality is for the sake, it seems here, of human beings developing the ability to be proactive in the world. To take their reactive and natural self and channel it into um, something positive and proactive and unique to that individual. And so if... if you know, if that's the purpose of all of creation, if you're engaged in the purpose of all of creation, then the creation is for, sh for sure not trying to get at you, because it's all, you're taking all of it and, and putting it into something positive. You're taking all of it and putting it in the direction that all of it was created for. Right? Whereas if you're just in a reactive state, then yeah, you, you better run, because it, everything's trying to get at you. you know, but the only reason everything's trying to get at you is in order for you to, to just wake up your consciousness that you should actually do something. You know, it's not, it's not, the, the world is, you know, uh, you know, the world is, is there for the sake of development of consciousness, basically. It seems to what the Zohar is saying. So when you do something proactive in the world, then the, all the negativity becomes batel to that proaction. And it's not there, it, it can't, it, it meaning that protects you. It's the proaction, it's the doing something positive in the world that's beyond your uh, natural self, meaning right, what you've kind of trained yourself to be, either by your own midot or uh, that you were born with, or how you were brought up, or whatever. Going beyond that and doing something proactive, using all of your natural self to implement something really good and positive in the world. That's basically the whole purpose of creation. And so, and so, when you're doing that, which is in line with the entire purpose of creation, then. That protects you from being hurt by 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 creation. That makes 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 logical sense, right? The whole of and this is and, and again when you're doing this, it doesn't matter where you go, right? And this explains why again when when these great uh, rebellion are doing things in the world, again it's conscious. It's it's not just reactive. It's not just again. It's very nice to say, oh, I, I don't I don't want to be punished by God, so therefore I'm going to keep Shabbos. It's good. It's better than not keeping Shabbos. But it's still reactive, right? Better would be, oh, what an awesome thing Shabbos is! What an amazing thing to keep Shabbat! What, what an awesome thing! I take a, a day out of the week and, and just to focus, uh, refocus on God and refocus on who I am and shut out the world, so to speak, just to, to go deep inside myself. Um, wow, what an awesome! I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to keep Shabbos. I'm gonna, I'm going to be Shomer Shabbat. So, that's a proactive thing. You know, that's something again. So when you're doing so, these rabbis, when they're doing something, when they're doing mitzvot, it's not reactive. It's not just, oh, I, I don't want to be punished by God, therefore I'm doing. It's it's proactive. It's wow, what an amazing! I have this ability to keep Shabbat. I have a whole part of me which is Shomer Shabbat, which is a it's it's an ability. It's something to develop. I'm gonna I'm going to do it proactive. Not I'm not going not I'm going to do it because I'm afraid of. That's reactive. That's natural but proactive. Uh, so when you do that, so then your whole life is protected because again, you're, you're actually taking all the forces of creation and channeling them towards what they're there for, right? Which is development of human consciousness, of proactive consciousness, of the ability to, again, take spirituality, take spiritual forces and channel them in a direction that, that's unique to who you are. Again, uh, uh, and, and, and then when, when you're in this mindset, it doesn't matter where you go. And then this is why we see the Baal Shem Tov could, could go anywhere. Right? You see great rabbis, they're not afraid of going anywhere because, again, they're proactive. They're doing something proactive. Uh, and this is what it says, I mean, And his angels are commanded to you to guard you everywhere you go. So when, meaning the whole system is there, the, the system is set up so that uh, you will be protected while you're in this world. But you must engage the system. You must do something, again, not out of fear, but out of, again, out of proaction. And so it's something to think about. What does that really mean? Because we're so used to being reactive. 
uh, in both in spirituality and in the kind of regular world. The, the, the real question is, what does it mean to be proactive? What is it to really do something, again, not out of fear? And I, I feel like the, the Torah and, and the davening and all these things we have are ways by which we learn to be proactive. We learn to get in touch with those things that are beyond, uh, that are beyond fear either of a spiritual or physical nature. Uh, it's, it's a question to, to, to ask yourself. You know, if I wasn't afraid of anything, what would I do? Right? Meaning, if I wasn't a reactive person in any way, what would my pro-action be? It's kind of a passive way of initially engaging a person's proactive self. If I wasn't afraid of anything, what would I be doing? Right? And so it's a, it's a deep question, and it's something to ponder. And again, this, the reason we live a whole lifetime, or, or many, uh, is because these to get to what that really is takes takes quite a bit of time. It's not it's not the simplest thing. Uh, but the conception of God as the Melech, as the King, uh, has to do with you know not fearing. You only fear Hashem, so to speak, and fear is really a bad word. It's not the best translation. It really has to do with in awe of, because God is so infinitely great. So, if I so so when you approach prayer again, it should start to open you up to your proactive self because you're you, all of a sudden you're saying, wait, I'm old and doing and keeping the Torah, keeping the the laws should open you up to your proactive self because you're now responding only to the internal, only to God, and so therefore anything outside that again, so then that opens you up to so to speak, God's your creator, so He created you with a purpose that opens up to you to your purpose which also has to do with your proactive self, right? Your, your proactive self, your neshama, your soul, that has to do with the reason you were created. You can only, and that, again, the system of, of learning and dominating and, and the Torah is there to open you up to the, the tafkit, the, the charge, the, uh, the mission, the unique mission that only your soul can, that only you can really fulfill. So it's very important. So again, uh, we see... Uh, that uh, when a person, uh, again, to get beyond fear, uh, when a person goes beyond the reactive or fearful self, um, we see that then they, they are protected, so to speak, um, because all of creation is there for the sake of their development of their soul, development of their proactive self. Okay. <laughs>